Today on uh, the session, we have a very beautiful individual, uh, Mukunda Raghu, who I happen to know from his uh, student days. And he's been a brilliant student all through and, uh, and now he's doing some amazing work. So, yeah. Um, so Mukunda Raghu is an interdisciplinary artist uh, combining scriptures, dance and art to express himself. He was formally trained as a biophysicist, specializing on how cells move and shape tissues during development. Currently, he is learning Vedanta and Vyakaran at the Puri Govardhan Mat under the guidance of Puri Shankaracharya. Welcome to the uh, Mukundaraga. Welcome. Uh, Shri Guru Namo. Namaskar. Uh, thank you for that very lovely and kind introduction. I hope I am audible. Uh, you are absolutely fun, right? audible. And okay, we realize okay. that you have an amazing like session planned for us today. So you're <laughs> going to be leading it. But before you lead it, let's just take you, let's just try and understand uh, from your perspective, what triggered you from this whole journey of biophysics and everything into this to, to follow your passion? What was that trigger point and how do you happen to be here? Mm, well, to give a very straightforward and very short answer, very uh, to the point answer, it would be I heard my guru Dev on the YouTube, on YouTube, and that was one video was enough for me. And um, you know, it's just that dominoes effect. You the, the dominoes are all stacked, and you just have to just push one. You know, that would lead the entire domino effect, and that was it. Um, I could not stop listening to him after that. Everything else seemed dull uh, and, uh, and nothing interesting. Anyways, PG is a very, very interesting roller coaster journey, I would say, and Priyadi would <laughs> attest to it. So that was also taking us. And then I really, uh, I think it was back in 2018 when I started listening to him. And in the beginning, I understood absolutely nothing what that, you know, what he was talking about. But I could not stop listening to him and I just kept on and on. It, it took me almost like one and a half year to get used to that kind of vocabulary. You know, you're not re just the way you would start any new discipline. But um, uh, it was um, definitely, I would say, his kripa, you know, that uh, he had raised upon me. That I, that I it just, that, that bond was not very easy to let go of. And that is how it has been so far. And I have enjoyed everything so far. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, I have understood so far whatever that he has taught. Definitely, I have not even probably 0.1 to That would be too much greater to cite. But uh, whatever that I have gathered, you know, and through osmosis mostly, I am not uh, somebody who was trained in um, uh, Vedic Samskritam or Vyakaranam. But, uh, you know, it's, it's like when you have a good maths teacher. Uh, even if you're bad at it, you would always try to excel and, you know, learn what is that point of view that person is coming from? You know, what is it that, how does he see the problem? What, what is it that entirely, go, what is going on in his mind when somebody sees a equation and they exactly know how the curve would span out, you know? So that kind of an, um, that is something a lot of people adore in other people. You know, that is the qualities that we are always seeking for. So I think I just found it. And then it has been a wonderful journey since then. Beautiful. That was like, it was amazing listening to him. I think me and Priya would both kind of, you know, agree with that. And we know that it's a hard journey. It's a journey of a lifetime. So we are glad you started on the path and welcome. It's like a... Yeah, welcome to the road, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll definitely like have a long road ahead of us. And I'm pretty sure, you know, it's going to be a fabulous journey for you. So take it away. The session is all yours and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you. So today the session is, uh, well, it's a text that we're all familiar with. It's one of the most popular, most cherished and most key. You know, it's somebody that everybody we grow up, everyone grows up with. I remember when I was a kid, that was one of the first book that I was given by my parents. And it was a very brightly yellow colored, uh, tiny little booklet, I would say. It was written, Do Taka Matro in the bag in, in Bengali. It was two rupees only. And um, I, before, and that was, I wasn't even done my initiation back then, you know. But I was, uh, um, my uh, Upanayanam, as we call it, it was pretty early very when I was seven years old but even before that I was given the Hanuman Chalisa and uh, since then it's been like an 
you know, uninterrupted uh, journey. Uh, and th- th- I would say that is the case with everybody. And I'm sure whenever, whenever we hear the Hanuman Chalisa, you know, maybe, maybe sung by M.S. Subalakshmi or any of the great uh, renditioners, um, you know, this feeling that it just charges you up, right? And so, and how do I say, it's been God's grace, really, you know, that when I started uh, my my Kedanta journey. At that time, I was very much uh, intrigued by Valmiki Ramayana. And uh, at that time, we had started, uh, I had, you know, very briefly started learning the commentaries on Valmiki Ramayana. And then uh, it just kicked me, oh my God, these are the same things that I never realized, but, we, I, you know, it's kind of, you have internalized all these truths within you uh, through this very simple text that uh, Goswami Tulasi does. She has written, you know, so beautifully in uh, uh, Hanuman Chalisa. And then I just started um, as, you know, it's, it's just this kind of a if-else loop. You know, for example, in a, in a, in a computer code, you, you give whatever conditions you give, it will give you endless results, something like that. So the more you dive deep, the more and more interesting information comes out. And uh, to me, the, how Hanuman Chalisa starts, you know, at the very Doha itself, it says, Sri Guru Charana Saroj Raja Nijamana Mukuru Sudhar so Goswami Tulasi Das Ji, you know, at that time in India, in uh, Bharata, when um, the Shruti and Smriti had become extremely difficult to access to the normal people, he brought out the same truth so that people could cherish, you know, the, that, those texts and the very absolute truth and the beauty in that truth that our scriptures are uh, very much uh, uh, kind of integrate within them in very simple and serene and local language, very colloquial language. That is the beauty of Hanuman Chalisa. Yet he ha- there, you will not find a single compromise that has been done on the philosophical part of it, on the darshana part of it. And how Hanuman Chalisa starts, you know, there are many um, theories or stories how this Hanuman Chalisa entirely um, uh, began, how, how its composition was given. But um, that is not the focus of today's um, presentation. Rather, we'd like to dive deep into the very words. What do they say? And the very first word is Shri. Now, uh, normally this word Shri, it's a very, very interesting word. For example, in Mahabharata, when we read, I, I mean, Mahabharata is a very huge text. Even if some, anybody who is familiar with Vishnu Sahasranamam or Srimad Bhagavad Gita, every time Bhagavan speaks, before Bhagavan, the word Shri is written. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. You will not find Shri Yudhishthira Uvacha, not Shri Bhishma Uvacha, but Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. But even when Lord Shiva is speaking, it is not said Shri Ishwar Uvacha. It is only Ishwar Uvacha. But for Bhagavan, it's given Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Very interesting. Why do you use Shri only for Bhagavan? And here we say before Guru, the word Shri is given. The word Shri when we look at the word to understand what this word Shri means, let's first look at the word Bhagavan. What is the word meaning of Bhagavan? Bhagavan, Bhaga Asya Asti Iti Bhagavan. One who has Bhaga is called Bhagavan. So how similarly, just like one who has Bhakti is called Bhaktiman, one who with Bala, with um, Valor is called Balavan. Similarly, one with Bhaga is called Bhagavan. Now, the next question naturally is, what is the meaning of Bhaga? Bhaga ka mat artha kya hota hai? Bhaga, the meaning has been given in many, 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 many scriptures. But one of my favorite ones is from Vishnu Puranam. It says, Aishwaryasya Samagrasya, Viryasya Yashashashtriyaha, Jnana Vairagyoshchaiva, Shannam Bhaga Itirana. Shannam Bhaga. So what is the Bhaga? Ham kisko bolte hai? What is Bhaga? Aishwaryasya Samagrasya. One who has all the riches, all the opulence in this entire cosmos that can exist. One who has all the valor, all, all the, the limit of valor that can exist. Imagine a king, you know, who has a very, very large dynasty. He has a very, very, he has the biggest kingdom. Ali Raja, we can think of him as an example. He had uh, um, conquered all three worlds, you know. But all that he could conquer was only the material uh, properties of this cosmos, you know. But Bhagavan, he not only has those material properties, first of all, he is the Sarva Bhauma Raja of this entire cosmos, of this Chaturdasha Bhuvanatma uh, Srishti that we see. Why? 
because he has the he's the one who is the material cause of it he has created it non tron that vds he has that valor to diminish it in a flick of a second you do, he doesn't even have to think about it that kind of a valor he has and that valor was reflected when he gave darshan to bali raja you know in the form of a little baman and the minute uh, the moment you know he gave his uh, third foot he gave uh, he showed us uh, his three vikram avatar aishwari yes sir done veer yes yeah yashah you know how popular can one be today we are living in a age of getting viral how popular can one get how many likes can we get but can you pinpoint any one culture in this world where the concept of god the concept of bhagwan the concept of spirituality is not there where the concept of being in eternal bliss is not there can you get more popular than this can one get more yash than what bhagwan has absolutely you know and this is the reason why everybody is attracted towards bhagwan that is why he has all the shri in himself all that attraction all that is nice all that is blissful all that is good all that is happy resides within bhagwan that is why he has this quality of shri man that is shri and why why is this shri coming from not only that jnana all that knowledge that is there to be known once you know bhagwan all that knowledge has been known to you you don't need to know anything else jnana despite having all these five qualities that one can think of bhagwan is completely detached from it vairagya vairagya is one quality that is very very difficult to attain for any human being for any of jeevas not even human being without getting vairagya is extremely difficult but all these six qualities are completely present and not only complete so in sarvabhauma swarupa it's present in bhagwan so that is why he's called bhagwan we can never have all these bhaga we can have a tiny little bit of here and there a speck of this and speck of that that is why we are called bhagyaman being born in a human body is a grace of bhagwan that is why we are called bhagyaman but and let's think of it what are the things that were that will get you to bhagwan in the doha it says by thinking upon bhagwan the very first line is shri guru charana saroj raj nijamana mukuru sudhar varanau raghuvar vimala jasu here i start to do varanau i start to elaborate i start to sing i start to glorify the very uh, name of raghuvar the of bhagwan shri ram bhagwan shri ram vimala yas his uh, glory which is unmatchable this unstainable you know that kind of a yasa but how to do that by cleansing my mind not my mind the mirror of my mind shri guru charana saroj raj nija man mukur sudhar mukur shabd ka arth hota hai darpan mukur means mirror so now for example very interesting why would uh, tulasidas ji use uh, the word mirror for his uh, for to refer to his mind to refer to his manas my puja guru ji is gives a very nice example if i have to see your face my eyes are enough you know or see anybody else's face or see anybody a job whatever goes on in your mind will be reflected on your face you know that is why if i have to see your face rather i have to peek into your mind looking into your face looking into your eyes are enough but to know what is going on to my mind my eyes are not going to be enough with my eyes i am going to need a pair of darpan you know a pair of uh, something that will reflect that image you know so now i am going now when i use hold the darpan when i am holding a mirror i see my face but he is saying in order to see but uh, when you hold when you clear the mirror of your mind you are going to see bhagwan's face how is that possible because bhagwan lives resides right inside your heart so when you clean that mind you're going to see bhagwan's beautiful divya face that is residing it but what is the ingredient that you need for it shri guru charana saroj raj you know hamare jo guru hai unke paad padme ke jo raj hai you know just by taking the very dust of my lofi of my guru's lotus like feet i clean my mind what does it mean you have to make yourself humble you have to come and sit next to a guru and ask him ask him very very politely ask him for his permission and ask him for his guidance once that happens in you know, a guru's grace by very guru's grace you are going to see bhagwan's image in your heart but still why would you need to use the word 
Shri Guru, in order to see Bhagwan Ram's image, you know, you could have just, he could have just said, Guru Charana Saroja Raja, he doesn't say that. In our Shastras, every Anuswara, every Visarga has its purpose. Not only just Aksharas and Varnas. Every Anuswara, every Visarga has not lost its spot. You know, it is there for a very reason. Let's look at Hanuman Chalisa and where uh, Tulsi Das Ji comes from. You know, his lineage itself, some people call it from, it's the Ramanandi lineage, where Parabrahma, Paramaishwar, Ishwar has come as an avatar on, on the earth as Lord Sri Rama. He gave his Nama Mantra Diksha to Bhagavati Sita. Bhagavati Sita gave his Nama Mantra Diksha to Hanuman. Since then, it has become begin an uninterrupted journey of Guru Parampara. So, this very idea of giving Bhagavan Nam's Diksha starts from Bhagavati Sita, which who is the teja of Bhagavan Ram Shri. So, putting Shri before Guru is absolutely the right and apt spot to start this uh, uh, beautiful uh, for text of 40 verses. <laughs> That's why it's very beautiful written Shri Guru Sarana Saroja Raja. By w- using the word Shri, Tulsi Das Ji has justified exactly what is it that we are going to see, exactly from where we are going to seek it. And we have to remember from where does this lineage come from? It is coming from Sriman Narayan himself who came down upon this earth as his Purnavada, his first Purnavataram as Bhagavan Sri Ram. And since then, it has been this uninterrupted journey of finding that truth, finding that possibility, finding your potential, finding that true bliss that has been with us. Now, in order to find Bhagavan Ram's image, he goes on to his uh, next verse, Shri Guru Charana Sarochara Nijamana Mukuru Sudhar Varanao Raghuvar Bhimala Jasu Jo Dayu Ko Phala Char Tole Da Phala Char Phala Kya Kya Hota Hai Jo Char Purusharta Hai Dharma Artha Kama Moksha Har Ek Jeev Ke Liye Har For Every Human Being These Four Are The Compulsory That One Has To Attain In Order To Understand Who Who Bhagavan Is Now To Do That Buddhi Heen Panu Jani Ke Sumirao Pabban Kumar In Order To Know This I Need That Intellect For Which I Meditated upon you, Bhagavan, you the favorite bhakta of Lord Sri Ram, one who is an idol for every bhakta, you know, one we look up to. And by singing your glory, I am going to understand what the glory of Bhagavan Sri Ram is. And in that word, I can even understand what is that image that we are seeking. And after that, Hanuman Chalisa starts Jai Hanuman, Gyan Guna Sagar, Jai Kapi Sati Hun Lok Ujagar, Ram Adut Atulit Baladhama. And in the first few verses, what we see, an identity. Who is it that we are thinking of? Bhagavan Sri Hanuman's identity, his parichai is being established. Who he is, how does he look, what are his qualities. All these qualities are, we are going to see, for example, some of the Vidyavan Guni Ati Chatur. He is the one who is Vidyavan, he is Guni, Arti Chatur, and for example, uh, Mahavir, Vikram, Bajadangi, Kumati, Nivara, Sumati, Kesangi. Now, all these qualities that we see in Hanuman, in his character, uh, Sri Hanuman's character, all these qualities are very, very human qualities, you know, to become valorous, to become very, very intelligent, to become, you know, to let go of something that is ill. You know, to let uh, um, and you know, always be something that will take your mind towards what is not ill. So, and uh, why it's very easy because these are the qualities that Bhagavan showed when he descended upon earth as uh, his Rama Avataram. In Valmiki Ramayanam, how it starts, the very first question it starts with a dialogue between Valmiki Ji and Naraji, where Valmiki Ji is asking Naraji. All these qualities, you know, the, so I mean, he's going to list 16 qualities and he's asking, can you tell me in this, in this Sampratam Lokam, in this right now, at this contemporary time, uh, Loke, Loke as in like all, in all the 14 Lokas that we have, can we name one person who has all these 16 qualities who is Gunavan? Who is Viryavan, who is Dharmagnya, who is Pritagnya, who is Sarvabhuteshu Kohitaha. And then, after hearing all these, uh, all his, que- his questions, Naraji starts telling him the answer, you know, who that is. And that is how uh, um, the Valmiki Ramayana begins. 
you will see in hanuman chalisa all those 16 qualities that is described for lord rama has been cited here in hanuman chalisa balaban gunaman chatur you know all these qualities which means as we think upon bhagwan we start to you know get closer and closer and closer to his image not only image how he sees you know because bhagwan rama is also in this 16 qualities one of the qualities priya darshana one who is good to look to for example somebody is extremely beautiful very very beautiful to look at you know but he always has a frowning face you know whenever somebody looks at it people either will get intimidated or is somebody who looks very very uninviting that is not priya darshana priya darshana bhagwan shri ram the moment you think of his face you will think of serenity you will think of calm and all these 16 qualities together you know it's a reflection of his on his face in more so his eyes you know his kamalaksha his eyes you know he has this durva durva shamam durva uh, he has this very dark green marakata like uh, green color but his eyes are red his kripa kataksha you know, it's filled with mercy you know all his qualities that you know, when he thinks of his bhakta will be reflected in his eyes all these qualities will be reflected upon bhagwan upon his favorite bhakta who is um hanuman or ho bhi kyun na i mean it is only but obvious because lord bhagwan lord hanuman's birth very birth has been given by the devadas in order to serve shri uh, 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 shri ramchandra bhagwan that is the very idea why not only hanuman ji but all the vanaras that you see you know in kishkinda starting from uh, um arhane kandam all you know the very reason why the vanaras were born it is because before lord rama was born devatas went to shriman narayan and they asked him um, this ravana fellow you know he is doing in menace on earth he has no he has absolutely no concern for where what great lineage he comes from you know he is from this great brahmana family swayam kuvera where he has been you know gracious upon their his family lineage he doesn't care about dharma he has he is a siddha brahmana as well you know he has all these siddhis you know he is a very uh, ardent devotee of uh, uh, shri uh, of uh, uh, bhagavad uh, shiva shambho he doesn't care about scriptures he is only going after women oh shriman narayan it is time that you go upon earth before this treta yuga gets over and uh, uh, gets into dwapar yuga this is time you have to get uh, taken avatar and we will be born as uh we will be born as uh, alternative kshatriyas you know as banaras in on earth and we will assist you because you know so so is the lila parikar has been planned out you know how the entire uh, ramayanam will end and how ravana will be div, um, will be taken care of by bhagwan shri ram and at that time uh in that kshetram the pampa kshetram that we call it this uh, well there are debate exactly where it is but it's in karnataka maharashtra we will not get into it but there um, uh, hanuman ji's um, mother kesari you know she was uh, uh, she was basically uh, there and doing her chores collecting the flowers for her puja and uh, how most women are at that time she uh, was she felt as if somebody is touching her somebody is touching her in a very very uh, seductive way but she couldn't she couldn't see anybody and later he realized it was vayu devata himself who had touched her but then she got extremely angry that i am an ekapati ekapati brata woman how dare how can you do this to me you aren't you a devata and at that time vayu devata says don't worry i have come to you after from contemplating upon bhagwan shri shiva and there is a purpose why i must touch you but do not worry by me touching you your satitva will not get hampered just the way when we take bath every day jala devata is touching us right but that doesn't mean that you know we are being you don't it, it doesn't make any sense you know because vayu devata is touching you at every point so it, it doesn't make any sense but we sometimes forget that you know same time when same thing happens when bhagwan krishna comes in the gopinis they're always think, thinking uh, i mean as we in odyssey dance i am i'm a dancer as well so we have all a lot of these lyrics you know तेरा जो इतना गर्व है तेरा जो इतना गुमान है तेरा जो इतना दम्भ है 
कि तू एक पति व्रता है जो सती नारी है वो सब भगवान कृष्ण को देखोगे तो एकदम मतलब एक चूना चूना हो जाएगा बट द सेम थिंग यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट वाई इज समी फॉलोइंग एक पतिव्रत एक पतिव्रत वाई इज समी बींग सती टू अटेन भगवान राइट बट एट दैट एट राइट देर भगवान इज देर इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड इफ यू के नॉट फॉरगेट हिज you know that that physical identity of him there is no point in following all these vratas right that is why bhagwan goes and he's going to steal all your clothes he's going to uh, steal your butter to make you realize that all that you do is to attain me and here i am serving you serving in your feet and you uh, get dare to look away from me that is the reason you know why do they go to rasleela even though they have to think about their kula maryada they have to think about all the societal bonding and even then in the vraja everybody knows you know there is bhagwan shri krishna nobody is going to doubt the gopis that they are they have been gone and they have been ruined they have been illed by somebody yet it is a chakshulaja that the gopinis have they must think of it but they know that this is not something that is going to affect them similarly when vayu devata touched anjana devi it was not to, this cannot spoil her this cannot uh, you know do any ill to her so here it's very interesting how what is the Uh, um, uh, uh, the identity of Bhagavan uh, Sri Hanuman, Sankar Subhana Kesari Nandana. He is the Kesari is the biological father of uh, um, uh, of Hanuman. Anjana is the mother, but his tej, his urja, his power comes from Vayu himself. Who is Vayu? Vayu who had been contemplated upon Lord Shiva. more so there is another very very strong and very very pertinent philosophical point that we must think of nirgun nirakar para brahma parameshwar when he is manifesting himself as this material cosmos there are five uh, activities there are five actions that he must do panch kritya hai jo unko karna padta hai srishti sthiti samhar anugraha and nigraha Shristi, he has to create this cosmos as Hiranya Garbha or Brahma. Sriti, he has to maintain it and he has to kind of nurture it as Vishnu or Narayana. He has to uh, end the cycle as uh, Shiva. Not only that, but these two, uh, these three actions are not enough. More so, he has to be one who regulates, you know, who maintains law and order as Shakti, as Bhagavati, as Parachiti, and he is the one. who is going to manifest himself as grace as anugraha as ganapati these are the five kritiyas and pancha devatas are assigned to it vayu is actually uh, um, and if you think about the five kritiyas all these five kritiyas will be reflected in the five elements the pancha bhautika samsara that we see we have akasha vayu hu vayu hu agnihi agnihi um, apah apa prithvi hi these are the five so we have this uh, Akash, I don't know what is the best translation. Some call it space, some call it ether. But Akash is Akash Tattva. From Akash comes Vayu. Vayu from Vayu comes Agni. From Agni comes your uh, Apah or water. From water comes your Prithvi. All these five elements are reflection of one on Devada. Vayu is the uh, the essence of Bhagavati Parachiti, who is the Shakti of Bhagwan uh, Sambar Sadashiva. and that samba sadda shiva shakti is impregnating uh, anjana so that is the kind of a very complex um, identity hanuman has you know shiva bhav bhavit jo vayu hai wo wo aur kesari ke virya se anjana ke garbh mein hanuman ki utpatti hui and why because he could serve bhagwan shri ram after being born as hanuman you know he was a fantastic fabulous student you want to why because he was taught by bhagwan surya himself now once again very interestingly vayu is the reason vayu jo hai wo karya karan hai karya kya hai agni bhagwan surya is the reflection of agni tatva tej tatva whose karan is vayu you know vayu has two qualities that is of uh, sound and that is of touch sparsh and shabda from comes savishesh um, um, uh, अग्नि तत्व विच हैज थ्री क्वालिटीज फ्रॉम टू क्वालिटीज वे आर गेटिंग थ्री क्वालिटीज जो अग्नि है वो वायु में चला जाता है यू नो एट दैन वी आर गोइंग टू गेट प्रलय यू नो पृथ्वी विल गेट बैक इन टू आप और जल तत्व जल तत्व विल गेट बैक इन टू योर अग्नि तत्व अग्नि तत्व विल गेट बैक इन टू वायु तत्व एंड फाइनली इन टू योर स्पेस आकाश एंड इट विल गेट इन टू परम परमात्मा 
जब हनुमान जी जाते हैं वो सूर्य को एक लाल फल समझ के खाने लगते हैं सी दैट रिफ्लेक्शन दैट योर अग्नि तत्व विल गेट इंटीग्रेटेड इन टू वायु तत्व विच इज भगवान जी हैज बिन रिफ्लेक्टेड बट देखो भक्ति की पराकाष्ठा क्या है गुरु गुरु भक्ति की पराकाष्ठा क्या है यहाँ पे जो वायु तत्व है जो कारण है सूर्य देव के वो उनको गुरु मान के उनके सामने बैठ के वेद शास्त्र इत्यादि पढ़ के अपने आप को विद्यावान बनाए और विद्यावान कैसा विद्यावान वॉट काइंड ऑफ इंटेलेक्ट दैट हैज वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ विद्यावान गुनियति चातुर हैज बिन सेंड इन हनुमान चालीसा वॉट इज विद्या विद्या इज वेर देर इज नो अविद्या बेसिकली वॉट इज अविद्या विद्या मीन्स आवर कारण शरीर आवर थ्री शरीर द फर्स्ट शरीर दैट वी हैव is the sthula sharira this gross material body that we have which is supported by your sukshma sharira you know which is your mana buddhi chitta ahankar your pancha ka gnana indriya karma indriya and your prana indriya when the base of which is avidya avidya is what the, basically the accumulation of all the your past karmas and the reason that why you have not get in kaivalya moksha you know that is why you have been born on this earth that avidya one who has conquered over it by vidya you know vidyavan who has been you know who has cleared off his avidya and he knows who he is he knows his true identity and how do you get that shast by using shastra where has he learned shastras from from bhagwan shri surya there is no there is no doubt that he is a complete master of shastras not only that in bhagwan shri ram's quality you know one first second quality third quality is dharma gnya one who knows shastra smart all the shastras he knows by heart is bhagwan shri ram because he is the manifestation of all these knowledge of course he will know them by heart and his bhakta hanuman he has learned it from no other than bhagwan stage you know every day we wake up bhagwan surya is basically is a praman hai hamare samne ek prakat praman hai jo parameshwar ki tej ke swarup hamare samne roz aate hain you know all the prani ke with me prani mein pran sanchar kaun karta hai bhagwan shri surya ke tarah hota hai so that is the reason and he has learned vedas from him and how, how do we know he was absolutely you know an expert in vedas and vedanga the first time when hanuman meets lord shri ram uh, you know sugriva will order him okay um, see i think uh, those men i see they are extremely well built he is uh, looking at the bhagwan ram and lakshman ji and he says they look extremely well built i feel that it is bali you know who has uh, sent them could you please hanuman go and see what they are up to and if they are nice men please bring them to me and tell them that uh, you know that you are my sachiv you are my secretary you are my minister and bhagwan uh, and uh, hanuman ji says sugriv ji i think um, you are you are so obsessed with bali you have kind of a lost your uh, not lost but it's a very strong word to use for your uh, uh, king but basically what he meant that you know i think you are being a bit too ugri bahut ugri matlab udri ho rahe you know there is no you should once you see somebody when you look at their attire when you look at how they behave how they are you know walking around you should know what kind of people they are i don't think uh, those people are there from bali and more so we are here in this protected ter- uh, territory where bali cannot enter yet sugriva would not you know he would not accept this answer he sends uh, hanuman Hanuman ji goes there as a in a very Brahman a vesha as a Bhikshu vesha as a as a as basically a Brahmana and then he asks uh, oh uh, Bhagwan Ram and uh, uh, Lakshman ji who they were and uh, but Bhagwan Ram and Bhagwan Lakshmana wouldn't answer him at the very first instant so he keeps on saying this and that and then finally this is commented by our acharyas by our preceptors. um bhagwan uh, hanuman ji says uh, to um uh, uh, bhagwan ram that uh, i see you are very well built you know uh, when bhagwan ram was uh, born he is called ajanu bahu his hands are as lo- as long as until his knees you know ajanu bahu you have very very well built hands you have very very muscular so- uh, shoulders um but they are very they are they, they are not visual you know these uh, shoulders that are that show that you come from a very highly respectable uh, kshatriya family uh, but why are they, they not unke abharan kyu nahi hai wahan pe jo gahana hone gahne hone chahiye usse wo susajjit nahi hai simhaskandhav mahotsaho samada vibago vrishao ayatash subrittash bahavas parighopama bahava is the word that he chooses to describe his hands in sanskrit the grammar 
numbers are not two there are three numbers you have the singular number for which it is bahu one arm dual or uh, the second number is dual number two bahus bahu with the dirgha u more than two bahus bahava this is the word he is using for bhagwan shri ram's arm bhagwan ram is vibhuja he was born with two hands unlike bhagwan shri krishna bhagwan krishna when he was born he was called chaturbhuja what is this wonder of a child has been born oh my god with four hands and he is holding all these uh, different weapons and curly hair two um, set of teeth complete to oh and vasudeva saw and he was completely you know like what is this happening this kamsa once he sees this child he is like going like, to immediately get rid of but bhagwan ram one was born with two hands yet hanuman ji is calling him uh, referring to his uh, bahu with more than two hands our preceptors um, here comment that even with two hands which are very apparent hanuman ji could identify this is chaturbhuja narayana you know in his um, uh, dhanudhari vesha that is why when bhagwan ram heard hanuman he was completely mesmerized what grammar skills this man has this cannot be an ordinary brahman you know i think he is very very special person who knows all the vedas and vedangas that is why he knows how to speak like this oh lakshman very interesting he is not telling hanuman himself because hanuman has already told him hanuman namaha i am hanuman who is the secretary who is the uh, minister of sugriva so at that time who is rama's uh, secretary who is rama's minister lakshman he tells lakshman to tell hanuman who they were this is like the presence of mind bhagwan has shown us and of course uh, after that uh, in the hanuman chalisa uh, we see the leela that uh, uh, hanuman ji will uh, kind of a show you know how to really glorify bhagwan's naam sukshma roop dhari sinya hi dikhava vikat roop dhari lanka charava bhima roop dhari asura sahare ram chandra ke kaaj sabare you are there and you're going to put a feather to to his hair you know all those things that has to be done for bhagwan ram he is not completing it wo unhe khatam nahi karte wo agar chahte to bhagwan shri sita ji ko ek mein le ga chale chale sak chale chale aa sakte the lekin unhone wo nahi kiya right sukshma roop dhari sinya hi dikhava sukshma of course you know the very uh, i mean very literal meaning is uh, he has taken a very sukshma very subtle form you know in order to give darshan to siya siya ji sita sita ji and also give the sandesh that bhagwan ram had sent her and in order to do so you know there are many times when he had to take a sukshma roop you know during the when he leapt over the ocean you know there were the, these uh, uh, demons and demonesses surasa simhika lanki to escape all of which he took a very very minute form you know but um, and that's how he kind of escaped those uh, um, जो बाधाएं थी उनको वो पार करके चले आए बट एट द सेम टाइम यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट द माइन्यूटली हाउ ही हैज थॉट बिफोर ही फाउंड सीता जी सूक्ष्म रूप सिर्फ मतलब पांच भौतिक के शरीर का नहीं लिया सूक्ष्म बुद्धि से भी उन्होंने विचार किया सीता जी को कैसे संदेश देना है उससे भी पहले हाउ टू फाइंड सीता जी यू नो इट्स वेन ही इज रोमिंग अराउंड लंका very interesting of course the beautiful beautiful city very very well administered very rich and uh, he sees the pushpak vimana and that does shows you know the kind of a power the valor um, uh, ravana had um, at the same time he sees there is a mahalakshmi pujan going on now irony is <laughs> ravan who has captured mahalakshmi herself but at the same time she is he is doing mahalakshmi pujan in Ra- uh, in lanka but mahalakshmi sita is still so merciful yet she is showering showering all the bliss all the blessings on ravan and uh, you know lanka is full of gold full of gold finally when he goes into you know he peeps into ravana's bedroom it's a horrible horrible sight you know to uh, that one can uh, kind of attest he sees um, this there's a man lying and he is surrounded by naked women all over not one many many naked women all over who are just upon him he has wine glasses which are like you know toppled over and the, the entire room smells it, it just smells something of very very um, uh, full of tamas tam, tamas guna and in the very and then after some time he sees there is a lady who's um, you know he jo matlab thodi dur hai you know she is a bit far away who is bit kind of a divorced from this entire monstrosity that is going on around her and for a moment he said oh my god i have found 
Sita Devi. That must be Sita Devi. But then he thinks this cannot be Sita Devi. My Sita Ma can never live under the same roof as somebody as wicked as Ravana. But then who this person is, you know, who is kind of uh, detached from all these all these disgusting things that we see Ravana executing? That is Mando Devi. Can you think of a wife, you know, who has to go to sleep seeing her husband like this in every day? That is the kind of pain. And she kept telling Ravana, oh, Ravana, do not do this. Ramachandra is going to be the cause of your death. You should not do this. Follow the path of dharma. Go surrender to Bhagavan Ram. Ravana wouldn't, of course, listen. You know, the, you cannot teach stupid people. Stupid people never learn. And Mandodari's character, of course, at the time when Ravana, Ravan ka jab nidhan ho gaya, Mandodari's character, we see a beautiful, um, we do see a beautiful kind of a, a, a reflection of what kind of character she held. And of Bhagavan Ram, she as well. You know, Ravan is lying dead. Uska nidhan ho gaya hai. Wo zameen mein pada hai. Aur dur se Mandodari aa rahi hai. And Bhagavan Ram immediately understands that who this person is because wo vidwa ka dilap kar rahi hai. You know, she has been widowed. No matter, of course, she hated her husband, but yet, you know, the, the pain of be, becoming a widow is extremely excruciating. Now, this is the time when Sandhya has come, just like now. Mandodari is coming from far apart and Bhagavan Ram sees her coming. As Mandodari approaches Bhagavan Ram, what Bhagavan Ram does is he's taking steps back and he goes under shadow. You know why? Because even at that time, he has this presence of mind. I cannot even see my shadow any, with any other person than Shri Sita. Because Mandodari is coming and a shadow is going to stand next to Bhagavan Shri Ram's shadow. That is the kind of Eka Patni Vrata Bhagavan Shri Ram has shown us. He has, of course, shown us all the Kshatriya qualities. But he has shown how to love your wife like anything. That what your wife would mean to you. So coming back to Sukshma Nupadhari's Nyayi Dikhava, so all these minute things has been thought by uh, uh, by uh, Hanumanji before he even finds uh, uh, Sia, uh, Sita Ji, who has been captured in Ashoka Vatika. Finally, you know, he finds her. Uh, but at the time, he's worried. If I go and uh, you know speak in chaste Sanskritam, this lady who is about to commit suicide, you know, who's uh, breaking a tinka cho hota hai na, durva ka, you know, she's breaking off one leaf of durva and she keeps in front of uh, Ravana. And there are various reasons our preceptors have, uh, you know, kind of a reason why she would do it. Uh, regardless, this person would immediately get scared and she would commit suicide. But I have to do the work that Bhagwan Sri Ram has done it and I have to tell her, right? That how to do it. Of course, she start. He starts speaking in. It is said that he starts speaking in Tamil. You know, not in chaste Sanskritam, but in Tamil, in a local language, so that first of all, her fear is you know kind of a, uh, gets a, a bit uh, diminished. You know, she kind of uh, it's uh, ameliorated. And then what does he say? He starts uh, uh, doing uh, the uh, Nama Sankirtana of Bhagwan Shri Ram. That Nama Sankirtanam would have would leave no doubt that this, this cannot be somebody sent by Ravana. Or anybody who is sent by Ravana will do anything. You know, all the all the lies that he they can kind of entertain, but they will not sing praises of Lord Ram. That is the kind of ego they harbor. So this is the Sukshma Buddhi that Hanuman Ji has kind of a uh, uh, demonstrated, you know, uh, in order to be, you know, how to do something where how to be operational. In any kind of a, any kind of a, um, uh, a scenario, you know, very very practical thing to learn. None of us, well, very few people have it to be honest, and it's something to be. Uh, it is a very very sought after quality. Sab par Ram tapasvi raja tin ke ekaj sakal tum saaja. Of course, we have seen that how Hanuman ji has demonstrated how to be a good bhakta, how to do Hanuma uh, Bhagwan's work. But who is this Bhagwan? He is tapasvi raja, jo tap Tapi kleshe, tapa tap karta tap shabdika to thai klesh. You know, tap jahape hai santap hogya, patap hogya, you know, kuchpi ho tap shabdika. Very interestingly, the very uh, first verse of Valmiki Ramayan starts with the word tap. Tapasya dhyaya niratam, tapasvi vag vidam varam, naradam paripapracha, Valmiki rimoni pungavam. Tapasvi Valmiki is asking Tapasya Dhyaya Niratam Naradam. 
तप जो है तप शब्द का अर्थ क्या है तपक क्लेशे अपने आप को यू नो वाल्मीकि जी इज वी नो व्हाट काइंड ऑफ तप ही हैज डन बल्मीक यू नो ही हैज बिकम अ बल्मीक ही हैज बिकम दिस क्या बोलते हैं ही हैज बिकम दिस टर्माइट नेस्ट यू नो एंड दैट्स एंड ही इमर्ज्ड आउट ऑफ इट एज अ वेरी योगी तप तपोमुनि ओह इन दिस दो हियर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग तप व्हाई डू वी डू तप for example uh, in our shastras you, one has to kind of a practice this very uh, he has to do a tapas even in any following any discipline in any shastra discipline it's called aapko tapasya karna padega aapko apne aap ko jalana padega har roz you have to go through that fire and you have to be you know in that discipline otherwise you're not going to get it so what is the ultimate thing one may get it is brahma vidya to know who you are that is why you know we are said you know in the in the morning you have to do all these kritiyas all these anushthanas that you have to do sandhya vandan that you have to do this is tapasya why jo gayatri mantra hai you know that is the very reflection of parameshwara's uh, um, page you know we have to realize it. that is brahma vidya that we are seeking there is a reason why valmiki uh, ramayana is 24000 verses because gayatri mantra has 24 matras vahanshi valmiki has taken each matra each letter and he has expanded thousand verses on it and see shown what those 24 matras really entail what happens when that page comes down on earth and what kind of a glory it spreads that is why it is 24 matras that is spread into 24000 shlokas in ram in valmiki ramayana and that is what we cherish you know understanding ramayana means understanding brahma vidya that raja who is brahma vidya himself hanuman what does he want to do he doesn't want anything from that on or from him all he wants to do is sing his nama sankirtanam at the time when he went back to ayodhya with uh, sitama and um, and uh, lakshman ji he is asking everybody what do you want what do you want people are asking this people are asking that and then he asked hanuman ji what do you want tumhe kuch nahi chahiye he said yatra yatra raghunath kirtanam tatra tatra kritam astakanjalim वाष्पवारी परिपूर्ण लोचनम मारुतिम नमस्ते मारुतिम ओ गॉड आई आई फॉरगॉट द लास्ट वर्ड आई एम सो सॉरी आई 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 एक्सक्यूज मी दैट्स एब्सोल्युटली फाइन नो वरीज जस्ट गो विद द फ्लो या सो बेसिकली ही सेड एज लॉन्ग एज रामास नेम एंड रामायण्स ग्लोरी इज गोइंग टू बी संग अराउंड इन दिस वर्ल्ड आई वुड लाइक टू बी देयर एंड आई वुड लाइक टू लिसन टू योर ग्लोरियस नाम that is all i want that is why he is shrinji every time we sing rama's name hanuman ji is going to be there with us every time we are in any kind of a doubt any kind of a cake uh, any kind of a klesha he is going to be there he is a, he is a perfect bhakta he is the bhakta who has the, you know, he it is his preferred nama of bhagwan's avatar that is prescribed by his karan swarupa ishwara samba sadashi by the end of vishnu sahasranamam when uh, parvati asks uh, parvati vacha keno payena laguna what is that small can you short, uh, you know uh, direct a shorter route to me you know everybody cannot learn and memorize this thousand glorious names of bhagwan shri vishnu then ishwara says shri ram 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 iti rame rame manorame सहस्रनाम तत्तुल्यम जस्ट बाय सिंगिंग रामास नेम श्री राम जय राम जय जय राम यू गेट द फल ऑफ चैंटिंग विष्णु सहस्रनाम बिकॉज दैट इज अ काइंड ऑफ दैट इज द फेवरेट नामा ऑफ भगवान फेवरेट भक्त दैट इज व्हाट भगवान हनुमान जी टेल्स अस यू नो दैट इज व्हाट वी हैव टू लर्न फ्रॉम हिम एंड बाय अंडरस्टैंडिंग the the meaning that the weightage Rama Naam carries, you know, it has all the three elements: Surya Tattva, Chandrama Tattva, and Agni Tattva. Ra, A, Ma. These aksharas they carry, they kind of carry forward these three tattvas. And by understanding the teja, the Surya, Prachandam, the Chandam, the Surya ka the teja, the Kshatriya ka, the Kshatriya ka. Uh, Sanakta karan vaishishtya hai. You know that is a kind of characteristic uh, Rama has. at the same time he is shitam shu ch- chandram shu you know he is a uh, uh, chandra ki tarah shital manohar unka man bhi hai you know that is a kind of teji harvest and he is of course you know that entire thing is uh, carried forward by agni that agni tatva you know that he kind of resembles and bhagwan uh, ram's very reflection is given in hanuman that is why hanuman chal chanting hanuman chalisa every day will take 
will you know it it it's a experiential thing after chanting hanuman chalisa is a jo sat bar paath kar koi sat if you think of sat as a uh, 100 shat ko sat kar diya so you chant 100 times if you want to say no it's uh, an upper branch of sat seven do you chant seven times you say no i cannot do it uh, seven uh, three times then chant three times if you don't have time sing as chant any one of your favorite verses bhoot pisaa chadi kat nahi aave whenever you feel scared people do it people do it and it's an ex- experiential elevation you know that is a kind of weightage it has naam jo hai hamari yahan but in our tradition nama itself carries a lot of um, weightage it is very very important naam roop of bhagwan for example if somebody is sleeping and you call them by their name and they wake up there are two possibilities either that they first heard you heard you call their name and then they woke up but if that is the case you cannot prove jo wo soya tha wahi siddh nahi hoga agar soya tha to suna kaise right or the second possibility is that uh, the other thing you know that uh, he woke up and then he heard your name but if he woke up and after that he heard your name that means your name did not your name calling did not wake him up here our acharya says this is the very divine qualities of his name that it carries that the name itself is waking up wahan pe you know somebody who is a very very heavy sleeper wahan pe building bhi gir jaye he will not wake up but you call them by their name they will definitely wake up that is the kind of philosophy a name carries forward and that is why we should always think of the divya namas of bhagwan what is the most accessible and the beautiful one is rama rama itself means something that is you know that is that attracts you that is something beautiful you know that is it comes from the root word rama ram ram from from the word ram comes rama rama huh? anyways i think uh, for today i would like to this is where i would like to take rest i think it's been more than the time i was allotted and you have been extremely gracious of course i, I do have to make one submission that i am in no way an authority on this text you know everything that i have said uh, you listeners they must uh, take it with a grain of salt uh it is just that the sheer love i i have for this very text and the kind of a reverence and respect i have for our preceptors and the tradition i am just sharing whatever i have learned through osmosis uh if and if there is anything that one doesn't agree with it is completely fine uh and i do ask everybody to go to a able acharya and learn what this hanuman chalisa really is in its all true glory only then you know can we really kind of carry forward this legacy that we have have of chanting bhagwan's naam uh, bhagwan rama's naam so with that i think i would like to uh, uh, give it give the mic back to you and uh, thank you again for today's session and i really really rely upon your magnanimity and your um, uh, generosity you know to kind of accept whatever that i have shared with you thank you jai shri ram Jai Shri Ram! It was amazing listening to you. Your passion came through each and every word that you spoke, and uh, I think this was incredible. We would love to have you back, you know, if you would ever like to share more, because this is how we learn, this is how we grow. And you touched upon some very, very interesting facts. One of them is like the name, you know, the name, the vibrations that it carries, you know. So I'm going to share this personal story, which is that my name is Tapushri, and once I was like. To- talking to somebody and i said my name is the pushri but you may call me taps and this person turned around and said you have just cut your name you do know that the name carries a vibration right um so by cutting it out like that do you think it carries the same vibration and that got me thinking that i tell people you know i'm like oh you but you may call me taps but you may call me but the fact is my name the pushri carries a weight carries a vibration carries that energy that puts me in touch with the higher consciousness you know and i was this body was named for a reason i mean i didn't name it it was something that was given to me i need to honor that and if i don't honor that how am i even supposed to understand you know what kind of vibrations i'm supposed to carry what is my work on this planet um so you touching upon that aspect of naam and ram and even the way we speak the way we pronounce that has an impact we are touching these meridians within our body you know this this body is like a vehicle we need to use it properly and half of us don't even know we don't know uh and we spent like years and years you know even hanuman chalisa you go to any temple it's very popular people recite people chant it's amazing but the fact is that it the power that it carries how many of us are able to feel it how many of us are even able to feel 
0.1% of it, you know, and that is where we need to be. We need to be, we are, a, we are one, you know, we are all connected. This is like a bigger scheme of things that we need to really work on to getting and feeling that oneness and that love, which is completely unconditional, which is what we are all made of. So I think this was a very powerful session. And um, thank you for coming along and sharing it with us because, you know, you explained it beautifully. You have a beautiful voice. Um, so it was amazing listening to you. And I think you really touched upon these details in, in such a you know way that it was easy for anybody who doesn't, because you see, Shastras can also put people off, you know, and the language can be a barrier at times. But if we understand that you have to make use of what you have, which is a body, which is a tongue, which is this mouth, understand the dynamics, understand how the pronunciation works, understand the energy that you're transmitting through your words, because that is where the vibration is. And what do you speak, you know? And be mindful. Try and understand. Try and associate. Try and um, accept. And the biggest learning for me in this session, I'm pretty sure Priya has got hers to share after this, but mine was this amazing surrender. It came through you as, a, as an individual that you are from, you know, how you, through your guru, the connection and how you decided to just jump on this path without questioning it, just having that faith and that whole sense of surrender and trust. I think individuals like you are super inspiring and um, I wish you all the best and I would love to have you back. And if there is anything that you want to share, you know, the space is all yours and we would love to reconnect with you. So that is that was like something fascinating. So thank you so much. I'll hand over to you, Priya. What are your thoughts? Um yeah it was like i'll have to agree everything that with everything that the poster put through it was a very powerful session beautiful session and uh, the the aspects that you touched upon uh, with bhakti and how how one should surrender uh, the very first and the very basic requirement to go anywhere with your own self is to surrender is to understand and 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 the uh, especially with our generation because um i think uh, what we don't understand is um you know the very basic practices that we see growing up at homes the power that it sustains within itself and how do we connect to it how do we reflect upon those like it's um i think it was great and i i agree with the poetry again that you should come back with uh, more on this and with anything that you would want to share and put across and uh, and it's it's so wonderful to see you uh, getting tuned into shastras and basically uh, narrating it in such a um, fluid you know very relatable way manner. very it relatable is, yeah. yeah very relatable and mm -hmm. very easy to connect with it's something that you know like uh, hanuman chalisa i remember um reading the verses at one point uh and i was actually i actually told this to her that uh when we were talking this morning that uh you know hanuman chalisa has a very great power in itself and because i used to practice it but i didn't really look at it the way you explained it today so uh, i had my own um so so i i i trusted it and i used to just narrate it read it and that practice itself had put me in a, you know in a in a great confidence spot like it's as if um, that this just by doing it is going to uh, you know put me on a gaining uh, point but uh, but i think now when i will read the verses i will i will have a lot more to think about and especially the ucharana i think uh, i think you put a very very important uh, component there so yeah that's that's what i felt and i mean the power the power it was powerful yeah. i mean the the way you explain the words and you know the uh, i think next time when i say to somebody just call me taps i will think twice i mean i do think twice now i'm like am i really cutting short on the vibrations and and you know it affects when you get in tune and you're fine tuning like we all are when you get on the path and you would understand it better than anybody it is tough it is a journey where you have to unlearn so much yeah, yeah. 
yeah that then, that it then becomes like oh my god why would i why was i doing it all this while and and it's it's just it's just amazing so your last thoughts we have literally spoken and yeah. you know we loved your you so your last thoughts on being here with us today okay yeah I am completely overwhelmed first of all I'm extremely overwhelmed just yesterday I was telling Priya the you know I'm a bit nervous I'm doing my notes for tomorrow and uh, every time you know I speak on it I I to be honest I you know I think of like a projection uh, of a trajectory how things how, I mean I plan things how they would go and how I would like to narrate it but it doesn't go that no. way no it is <laughs> no it is, never uh, does it go no <laughs> no it is i mean even before coming you know there are different verses that i thought okay i think these are the things you know where i would get to you know be a bit more um, i don't know sort of demonstrative uh, and uh, you know there are certain things that i like more but mm. you know in the flow of the th- of this entire session i don't know what happened you know these other verses came on the tip of my tongue i felt like oh forget those verses i think I, right here i think i need to like really speak of this verse and this is an another experience that may seem erroneous to us you know in other respect but this is exactly what divine will is i i believe you know this is where uh, you let bhagwan take care of it and he will show you the right path and i'm just glad that uh, you know through sessions like these our generation i mean i i consider myself to be like not young anymore i'll be 30 next year uh, so like i by young i mean like college goers and school goers you know where there is this kind of a, a disdain from uh, scriptures and everything is looked at in a sort of very uninteresting and something i remember uh, growing up you know the um, memorizing and kind of a mugging up is seen something very very uh, it's a derogatory practice uh, especially if you're doing science oh my god he's just mugging things up when you are shastra there is why there is a reason why you are first asked to memorize you know first you must memorize the scripture then can you delve into what this really means because the meaning the kind of practice and the kind of tradition we come from the meaning is not only just how the word, how the word is written but also how the word sounds in vedas the sound yeah the sound yeah, and, and your pra- your own practice takes you into this understanding and the meaning ex- so the meaning exactly. is very different for every individual exactly. the more you memorize the way you speak you need to get that that you know your the when you pronounce something you need to get that right and once you get that right you're pronou- you know you're getting the energy transfer correct you can then understand the meaning and it oh, would, yeah yeah so it, it it's one of those it's it's a hard road i mean it, it's a hard road that you're on i mean we all it are is. on but but but, but <laughs> it's a different kind of joy you know i just feel it's it a is. whole different kind of uh, you know the whole world opens up and you just uh, you just feel amazing after different it. kind of fun i yeah. <laughs> pronounce it you pronounce it after one year you will come to realize some verses in a very different light mm-hmm. you know, probably mm-hmm. your own unfolding will present it in a very different way mm-hmm. to you and it's it's really really fun it's yeah. hard it's very hard it's super hard i super I, i remember I, I correcting i remember correcting someone so this is the last doha it says pavana tanaya sankata harana mangala muratiru so the dohas have a, as i said there are 24 matras right and the first part is 13 matras and the second part is 11 matras so 13 plus 11 it makes a total of 24 pavana tanaya sankata harana 13 matras so how she said it was pavana tanaya sankata harana mangala murati ru I mean, you cannot split it like that. You have to do thirteen plus eleven. You cannot do just uh, you know ten uh, uh, plus because what you are really saying is pavana tana sankata harana mangala. You know who who uh, takes away your mangala? No, no, he is mangala murati rupa. Right? You cannot say he is harana mangala. And uh, it makes uh, it just kind of changes the entire meaning. So you uh, again, sound is very very important. There is a reason why before chanting mantras, you know, we talk about what is the chanda, who is the yes. rishi. All these yes. acknowledgements are given. You know, yeah. that kind of a kind of a reinforces the the effect of sound. Of course, the first quality of the five yes. uh, karyas Bhagwan does a uh, space, which I mean, not space. Akash, that was the guna is shabd. Yeah, individuals like you come in and. taking the space and letting the energy flow i just feel amazing so thank you thank you thank you for giving me this kind of opportunity thank you to both of you thank you thank you again